Lions TV, we are sponsored by Regal Elevators and Lifts. Consultants Limited, a company that is owned and operated by a Millwall fan, just like every single one of our other sponsors that you can see on the screen, right? Now, if you are going to do a bit of business in the chaos that is 2020, then please keep it in the Millwall family by checking out all of our sponsors' website links in the description below or on our brand spanking new website, www.lionstv.co.uk. And while we're in the process of plugging things, we are, of course, on our way, hurtling, in fact, towards 13,000 subscribers on YouTube. So please, if you haven't already, press the subscribe button. And if you're a super fan, press that bell, and that will give you a notification every single time we upload a new video. Of course, we are on social media as well. Why wouldn't we be? It's where I spend half my life. TV Lions on Instagram, currently on our way to 8K. And if you want to direct any abuse at me whatsoever... It has to be on Twitter. I don't make the rules. They are just the rules. TV underscore Lions. Oh, my God. It feels good to be back. This is your pre-match prediction for Saturday's home game against Derby County at the Den. And by the time the first football is kicked at the Den on Saturday, it will be a full 106 days since our last competitive game, which was, of course, a 3-0 win live on Sky Sports on a Friday night on the 6th of March away to Nottingham Forest, all three goals in the first half, all three goals from the big dog, Matt Smith, and it was a brilliant, brilliant night, a brilliant performance, and momentum was building, but then of course, bosh, thanks for coming, coronavirus strikes, the world goes fucking mad, so let's have a look at what's changed since that day, so as I'm filming this, I don't think it's actually been confirmed by the club yet, but I'm sure it will do by the time the video goes out, Callum Davison has left the club, he has gone to manage Sue Johnston, and I think it's a massive blow for us. I think it's a massive blow. If I'm honest, I think it's a little bit timpar. I don't understand. For one, the Scottish season's over. So why can you not just finish the season and then head on up there afterwards and just say nothing for now? And two, you know, he's not been at the club that long. And I know football is a great man once said, a funny old game and different things can happen and things can change very quickly. But I just think it's a little bit timpar. If I'm honest, Gary Rowett came in for the job. Um, he, would have, he would have got in for the job, you know, back in Callum Davis and saying, I've got Cal with me, whatever. In, in, my, in my mind, that would have happened. And um, all factors considered, Gary Rowett's got a job. Now, of course, he would have got a job anyway without Callum Davison. But I think Callum Davison plays a big part in the day-to-day -day goings on. I think the players have got a lot of time for him. I think he's, he's, he's supposed to be a very good coach. So how much will that disrupt us? Hopefully not a lot. Adam Barrett will act up until the end of the season. So not ideal. Not ideal timing at all. And it's just a bit of a weird one for me, you know. But listen, it is what it is, and football is a funny old game, and things like that can happen. In other news, as I said, what happened before the coronavirus, we had two midfielders out. We've still got a lot of midfielders at the club, by the way, before that. Ryan Woods on loan, Jason Malumbi on loan, Billy Mitchell in the ranks waiting to come in, and Sean Williams. Now, on top of that, we have Ryan Leonard and Ben Thompson both out injured. They have since both returned from injury and are now back in and amongst the squad. Ryan Leonard, of course, scored two goals in the friendly last Saturday against Colchester, but... Let's talk about players that are going to be out. I'm hearing Ben Thompson is re-injured and he could have done something to his quad. Not, not too sure how serious that is just yet. And also, Aidan O'Brien is an injury doubt. Of course, there is one other player that cannot play quite higher profile considered who your position are. And that's Mason Bennett. Mason Bennett is ineligible to play against his parent club. He is a Derby County player for now, although I'm pretty sure he's not going to be by the time um, his contract runs up. I don't know if he'll end up at Millwall. Hopefully he will. I thought he was brilliant against Nottingham Forest, but he's been linked with Sheffield Wednesday. And regardless, it's all by the by because Mason Bennett is ineligible to play against Derby on Saturday. So before we move on to the starting 11, let's take a look at the current league table. Nicely perched in eighth position. We currently sit just two points and two places outside the playoffs with Preston holding that current sixth spot and just above them one place was of course our last opponents not in forest who we absolutely sledgehammered by the way in case you've forgotten at the city ground slaying an absolute massacre and you know it's just very unfortunate that the situation is what it is but it is what it is and hopefully the players can pick up where they left off the starting 11 it's going to be very difficult will we go four at the back as we did against forest will we go three at the back uh, at home, Rowett usually likes to do three at the back, so I think he'll probably go Bolkowski in goal. Alex Pierce, Jake Cooper, and Sean Hutchinson. I think he'll put Williams and Malumbi holding. Jed Wallace, John Daddy Bavardson behind Matt Smith. Is that the team I would pick? Uh, Connor Mahoney, if he's fit, I would put him in instead of John Daddy Bavardson. Bavardson seems to be a, be a little bit of a, 
an acquired taste. I don't really rate him. I don't think a few of the fans do. The gaffer clearly does, or he thinks he's the best of what we've got at the minute. And Mason Bennett would definitely play. But as we've already said, he is in eligible to do so. So I think the gaffer will go with Bavardson. And listen, I don't always agree with that, but we do seem to get results with Bavardson in the team. Whoever starts, whoever doesn't, we've got to back him. I don't think Ben Thompson is going to be fit. Obviously, the club announced that him and Aidan O'Brien are the only injury worries. And Ryan Leonard are planning a new advanced role in the 10 with his new man, Bunt. I think he could... I'm hoping he could do bits. Listen, I've, I've been critical of Leonard, and he does try. He is a trier. But for me, what we've got out of him in terms of what we paid for him, absolutely nowhere near enough. And we need more from him. I think he's League One standard, but I hope I'm wrong. And listen, many players have thrived under Gary Rowett uh, since his arrival. Marlon Romeo has improved defensively. A lot of them look like new players. So hopefully now, the, uh, in this new advanced role, and we like to get the ball down and, and play football, Two goals against Colchester. You know, people saying Colchester ain't, ain't the greatest. They're in the League Two playoffs. They're playing tonight. So, um, if you only beat the opposition, is put in front of you. And Ryan Leonard, two goals against them. One of them was a very good goal, if you've seen the clip on the highlights from the club. Hopefully, big things to come, and I won't have to call him League One Lenny no more. So, let's move on. So, the opposition is, of course, Derby County, managed by Philip Koku, the ex-Barcelona, Ajax, and Dutch midfielder. His first stab in English football he came come in at a time when he was struggling earlier in the season, if memory serves me. And he's very, very slowly turned it around. They've gone about their business quietly. It wasn't an overnight achievement, but they've slowly crept up the table on pre-lockdown. I was going to say post-lockdown. Pre-lockdown. We're still in lockdown, so there is no post-lockdown. Pre-lockdown. Um, you know, they just started to turn the wheel bit. They started to slowly creep up the table. They currently sit 12th in the table. Four places behind us, but only three points in it. And... I'm not saying they're going to do it, but if they do do the business against us at an empty den on Saturday, then they move level on points of us and will overtake us on goal difference. So it definitely is a game we need to win if we want to keep tabs on the playoffs and keep the chasing pack at bay. And the one to watch, of course, for Derby County is going to be England and Manchester United all-time top goal scorer, Wayne Rooney. So about three takes to get that right. So yeah, Wayne Rooney is the one to watch. Back from a stint in America... Don't think it's any coincidence that they've started improving since he's been at the club. Uh, listen, people go, I couldn't wait to give Wayne Rooney shit in a day now. I was going to give him shit about his exploits and all sorts of stupid things he's done down the years, including free air transplants and sleep with about nine grannies. But um, what I'll say is this, a big player, a big game player, uh, I'm sure he would have um, been in some massive uh, atmospheres and games and intimidating stadiums. But I think he might secretly have a little, little oh, thank fuck for that, ain't got, to, ain't got to face the wrath of the den. So of course, as we know, it is and the rest of the season will be behind closed doors. How do I think that's going to affect us? Will it affect us? Obviously, our crowd on this day can be the 12th man. It's notoriously known for that, the den. And also, every team we've got to play left this season is below us in the league. But as we know, that doesn't always work out well for us. So I think it may take a little bit of pressure off our players. Don't forget, we haven't performed too well at home. Our last win at home was a 2-0 win against Reading in January, I believe, the 20th of January it could have been, with John Danny Bavardson and Matt Smith for second half goals. And we haven't won at home since then. So maybe the pressure will be off the players a little bit. I think it should be anyway. We're not expected to make the playoffs. But I hear the confidence is high in the camp. So let's fucking go, boys. So this is your pre-match prediction, possibly the longest pre-match prediction of all time. But there you go. And it's time for me to give you a prediction. I am going to go for a 3-0. Mill will win with Matt Smith. Jason Malumbi and Marlon Romeo. I just went for the last two off the top of my head. There you go. Gone with it. But I'm confident that we are going to be a steamroller in Derby on Saturday and announcing once again that we are serious contenders for the playoffs. An interesting one that I, I do know. Should I say it? Well, I'm going to say it. Fuck it. Don't matter. Um, Millwall players obviously really cracked on during the uh, lockdown period with their fitness um, regime and, 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 their, and their things like that. But I, I'm hearing that Derby's wasn't compulsory and you could just do what you wanted to do. In fact, I've looked, seen a picture of Wayne Rooney looking a little bit like me. Um, looks like he's put on a few pounds, Wayne. So hopefully um, we will get the job done. I'm confident we will get the job done. 3-0, Bosch. Welcome back to football. So that's your lot for the first pre-match prediction in a very long time. It feels good to be back and not totally redundant and not spending all day, every day, sitting around in my pants eating Harry Potter. It's a lovely little vision for you all. There will be a triple upload on the channel today to celebrate the return 
of football. Obviously, this pre-match prediction, there will also be a fan score prediction from the other boys at Lions TV. It's good to have you back, boys. I have missed you all immensely. And if you think you know what a score is going to be, do not be shy to put it in the comments below. The third video in this trilogy on a Thursday is part one of Kenny Cunningham, Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 18. Kenny Cunningham, what a guy. He was worried, he didn't know, um, he couldn't remember much about me Wall. And four hours later, we were still talking. So it's going to be probably an hour and 20 minute double header. Uh, some, of, some of the chat wasn't on camera, but it was, it was very interesting. He was a Millwall legend and he, and, he, and, he, and he underplayed that massively. What a guy. So I can't wait to get that one out. I was going to finish by saying, I can't wait to see you all again on Saturday. But that is, um, I'm a creature of habit. That is obviously not happening. But fan cams across Skype. Post-match analysis, there'll probably be a group post-match analysis as well. A full-time reaction from Lions TV Towers front room. It's all coming. Football is back. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions.